Hello and welcome to another episode of the Order Trader Podcast. My name is Wandile Sishi. And I'm George Mini. And we got a pretty interesting show today. Um, but before we get into it, we this show was actually almost threatened um, because we had load shedding like now. now. And they cut all the power and the generator couldn't get going. But, you know, fortunately we have some handymen and women uh, who came in and, and got us up and running again. Well, some some people were locked out the building. Do you know I, did, I heard about that. I heard yeah. that there were people who were just trapped in, like... Well, trapped outside. <laughs> yeah. That's trapped. That's not trapped, but... Uh, but they were trapped outside and couldn't get in or away from the area that they were in. Well, it no? was out on the balcony. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. They were... The, 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 so what happened was the door magnet to the kitchen. Yes. Um, the battery went flat mm. during power time. Mm. And then when load shedding happened, uh, mm. the no battery, you, you, else, yeah. you, you can't put the code in and the magnet just... So what did we do? We just send them food? Like what was the what was the plan? No, we walked around to the front door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's an easy fix. <laughs> that's an easy fix. Because I was part of the party. Yo. <laughs> I was stuck outside. <laughs> Anyway, so we just had the last race of um, the first half of, of the year. Um, and it was Hungoro Ring. And uh, let me just say, <laughs> it was one of my favorite races this year for so many different reasons. Um, and, you know, the reason, the main reason is I think I, I think I got the team to actually put up a photo for me. Uh, one of the reasons of that is your, your, your team did a splendid job um, of being consistent. So yeah, well, I must I must be honest that like they're a bunch of clowns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they really are. I wouldn't disagree with that picture. <laughs> like I'm I've been a, a Ferrari F1 supporter. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm not a massive Ferrari everyday drive car yeah, fan, yeah. but I'm a big Ferrari F1 supporter. Yeah. And I just think I think I you know what I think's happening? What's happening? I think they're writing the strategy. <laughs> yeah. In Italian, <laughs> like, and using Google Translate, yeah, to kind of get us to to, to, find out to tell Leclerc stuff. and yeah. uh, um, uh, and science and yeah. science um, how to drive. Who knows what's going on? But it's so funny because um, when I was watching the the race, I think I think it was like lap thirty eight or something. But um, they called Charles to come in. And I, I see them pulling out the blankets out of the, the tires and I just see these wide strips and I'm like, no way is they going to do that. There's no way in hell they're about to put, put hard, on tires hard tires on. And I'm, I start laughing and laughing, laughing. Two seconds later, you send me a message and it was it was so poetic. It was so poetic. I think it was just, I think Ferrari strategically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, I lost it. I completely lost it because I was like, okay, the whole world is seeing what's happening here and it's not just me. Um, but yeah, I mean, Hungary last year, we Bottas came in, you know, like a wrecking ball and, and took up four cars in the first lap. And this year we're having, you know, more silly season. So it's, well, no, it's I mean, always, it's, it's a very, it's a very it's interesting yeah. season because, because the cars are able to pass. There's, mm. uh, there's a lot more competition and, and yeah. so I'm loving it. I, you know, the FIA must do more of what they've done yeah. uh, to allow the cars to follow even closer. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I have no words for Ferrari. I have yeah. no words. Uh, I would defend them every day of the week, but that was such a dumb move yeah. that yeah. I don't understand it. The car's there, everything's there, and it's honestly, you know, we keep saying it's a third week in a row. Yes, you're saying they're they just won. giving us, they're just giving Mercedes, you know, a chance. Well, uh, they're giving they they're giving they're giving the champion championship away to Verstappen and Red Bull. Yeah, and because he's I, don't, it. No, I mean, like I don't think I don't now. think for Mercedes. I know you're wearing the Mercedes regalia today, but. <sighs> Let's not go there. <laughs> um, I don't think Mercedes are going to stand a chance to win no, the championship, not. but um, it, with the way Ferrari is carrying on like a bunch of clowns, the Mercedes <laughs> might come second. I think we're like thirty-four points behind you guys in, in constructors, so it's 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 super close. Um, but we do have this month now where everyone kind of recalibrates and see what's going on. But you know, Hamilton's on a run. Hopefully, um, they recalibrate in English. Let's hope they, you know. <laughs> Let's hope they, can, they recalibrate the Freaking things. Hell. <laughs> but yeah, what a, what a halfway to kind of end. What, what a way to end halfway through the season. Um, it's it's going to get more interesting for sure. Mm. But what a season so far. Um, like you said, and um, you know George Russell. I take my hat off to that guy. I think he's yeah. a very level-headed very, rookie. Very level, yeah, uh, very level-headed rookie. I think he's. I think he put him put him in that Ferrari. I think he'll outri outdrive Leclerc. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I think he's he's definitely something special to watch. Mm. Um, Let's not talk about Hamilton. I still think <laughs> he's a plonker. <laughs> That's okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. The icon. Uh, we love talking about him anyways. Do you know what an icon is? It's Lewis Hamilton. Huh? Yeah. Lewis Hamilton is the oh, I icon. thought it was the thing on my screen on my phone. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, moving on. So this is the car hiring episode. And um, essentially what I'm going to be talking about here is the process of car hiring, as well as cars that you can hire for special occasions. Um, and how to, you know, go about, you know, navigating the car hiring world. Um, but have you ever hired a car before? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, every time I travel to Durban or Cape Town, oh, okay, I hire a car, you know. But yeah. that's, that's traditional car hire company stuff. Yeah, that's that's more of like a, um, like a short job, term. You know? It's not like a, yeah, exactly. It's not like for all for an occasion or anything like yeah. that. It's, it's purely. It's the rivet, like a rental kind of. Yeah. Do you know what the most expensive car to hire was, I guess? Because this is a little bit aged, but dated, uh, double as dated, data. But yeah. As in, as in like a short term rental. For a day. For a day. The, sh- the most expensive recorded daily average for car up until a certain amount of time. Um, I would guess it's a luxury car and not a sports car. So I would have guessed it's like a, a, like a Rolls Royce Bentley or, or Rolls Royce yeah. or a limo. Okay, okay. Um, you know, I wouldn't think that it's a, an exotic car because that would be I think that would be dangerous to have as a higher car. For sure. So, so I'd, 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 like logic, logic tells me, and I don't know the answer to this. Yeah. yeah. Logic tells me that it's a, a luxury car, and uh, if I take the price of a Bentley limo, uh, you know those kinds of luxury cars. <laughs> tough maths, yeah. Yeah, tough maths. No, no, I'm trying to like, you know, <laughs> two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand rand average rental, right? Okay. And you're talking about. A potentially ten times yeah. the price. Okay, yeah. so uh, and if I take a current car hire, maybe anywhere between three hundred to eight hundred, and well, probably higher now because of the fuel price, eight hundred rand a day. So call it call it eight hundred rand a day times ten. Two thousand years later, um, <laughs> I would say ten grand. Ten grand. We we finally got there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really being analytical. <laughs> no, you really, but you really thought about everything there, and I love it. I love it because. <laughs> well, you can't just like. <laughs> I mean, you just pull a number out the sky. Do you know what that's called? What's that called? It's called a sky hook. It is a sky hook, and you know, <laughs> like I think you did. You did a really you, you good job. Ca- you got to calculate it. I get it. No, I, yeah. honestly, I understand completely. Okay, so I'm gonna put it up. I think. It, I think. I think the producers have an image of it. So I think. Oh, um, a Veyron. It's a Veyron. A Bugatti Veyron was um, in 2018. It's probably a lot more now. Was recorded as the most expensive car to hire. Price? 335,000 Rand a per day. day. There goes my 10 grand of my mats. <laughs> yeah, which is why I was like, yeah, okay, times 10, no? <laughs> uh, so yeah, 300, uh, 335,000 Rand a day to hire a Bugatti Veyron. Well, I mean, I suppose you, yeah. you, there's not many of these around, right? For context, an oil change in a Bugatti is around that much. So, um, you know. They are really expensive cars yeah. in general, just to run. Yeah. Um, and um, the the agency that actually hires it out did say that um, it's usually for like shoots and stuff. It's not really if you know it's it's, it's or like for a movie set or yeah. one of those things. Just because the insurance alone is just you know no insane. I'm pretty insane. sure. Yeah. So what does it cost to hire a Bentley for a day? Mm. Uh, I'm not too far off. My math's not bad for a Bentley. I never said your math was bad. It's 890 US dollars, which yeah, is which like is 12 grand. No, no, look, I'm not saying your math was bad. Your and math a was Bentley Continental V8, 1,190 US dollars per day. No, your math was perfect. Your math was perfect. I think you were just looking... You no, know, well, looking I, I said place. no sports cars. Yeah, and yeah. That, you know. I mean, that's a hypercar, to be fair. Well, yes, yeah, it's a hypercar, so, so... Your math and, and thinking was completely rational. I completely... No, that's you know. okay, you don't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways how to hire a car so usually the process of if you're going to be hiring a car is you need a valid driver's license i don't know i didn't know this and you know until the first time i went to go hire my car but you not d- the license bit <laughs> 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 i knew i knew you needed a license but i didn't know what i'm about to say sorry i i, I did that information the wrong way uh-huh. but usually there's a, a, a like you, you have to be a certain age to einstein hire a car. was also dyslexic <laughs> i'm trying my best jordan <laughs> <laughs> you, you must be at least a minimum age and usually it's around 23 um even in south africa so 
I didn't know that the first time I went to try and hire a car that that's you know something that they they consider. Well, uh, it's 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 down to risk, I guess. You it know? is. Yeah. So um, companies can put whatever rules they want in place. So different car companies can have different ages. They can say you you have to be thirty, yeah, uh, to to hire a car from us. So so it's it's not a it's not a law. It's a, it's a For car sure. hire company rule. So you know, twenty three or older. Um, it's probably you know they've taken it from each other and, yeah, uh, I, yeah. and applied it. I, I don't think it's a, it's not a, it's not a legal thing. No, no, no. no. The, I mean, the driver's license thing is definitely a legal thing. Um, but you know, I, you'll I, probably find companies that do under twenty three. No, there, there is, yeah. there is. Um, yeah. So that was my next point: is if you are a young driver, usually they just charge you a little bit extra. Yeah, um, you'll pay for it. And it goes down to experience. I mean, the younger you are, usually you just you know you don't have the experience, and it's you just higher risk person mm. ultimately so that's the first thing then something that you need to consider is also it's usually credit card payments um well i had this problem i had this problem uh, at the end of covid um yeah when uh, when i traveled again for the first time and um and uh i had to hire three cars there was a you know okay. party of us traveling yeah and i had to hire three cars and i was the only one with the credit card with a credit card so you had to just Swap for all three. So I'd swap for all three, which wasn't the problem to swap for all three, yeah. right? For me. Yeah. It was a problem for the car hire company. Because who's going to be driving? You're not going to be driving all three no, cars. No, they want a different credit card for each vehicle. A uh, vehicle driver. Mm. Um, so so it became a problem because I said, well, like, can't you just put a hold on my card for, um, yeah. for each person yeah. that is taking a car? Mm. And they said, no, we need a different credit card for each car. Yeah, Suck. I think no, I know. I think me. I know why. If you, I mean, if it's you taking up three different, surely you're not driving all three of them. And, and when it comes to insurance, it's the basically your name has to be on the credit card. Yes, and um, I didn't know that. And that's kind of you know the big challenge is we now spent about legally, one hour there phoning the head office of that car rental company. You're yeah. Like, why does this have to happen? And um, as a matter of fact, the following time we travelled, uh, yeah. um, we used a different car hire company, and they allowed one credit card. Oh, okay. So it depends from credit card company, um, uh, from car hire company to car hire company. But, yeah. You know. And did you have to pay the full amount? Because I know that's also something that some of them say you have to pay the full amount now. It'll just be like they'll take half now, half later, but it's it's already been swiped essentially. No. So what they do is they put a hold on your card. Yeah. So they 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 block out five Eight grand. Months, yeah. And um, and and that's the the potential uh, you know risk and um, and car hire fee and fuel and all that stuff. Yeah. So they'll block it out, and then um, and then when you return the car, they'll just take what they need to take and then and then release the block. Yeah, but I mean, but that's what I'm trying to say. But you have to have the full amount. Yes. Yes, available. you've got to have it available, available yeah. as credit. So you couldn't yes. have maxed out your credit card. It was not going to work. Okay, so that's also another thing to uh, kind of take note of. Well, if you've maxed out your credit card, you shouldn't be hiring a car. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's uh, needless to say. It's probably a good idea you don't do that. Get a bicycle. Um, And then payments are usually compulsory at the beginning, um, and then you need to do deposits usually. And yeah, just make sure that um, you have any accidents or have any fines or anything like that, because that could be a potential blockade as to you getting the car that you want to hire. I've never seen a car hire company check for fines. Um, it's well, who knows? Um, it's kind of a maybe they, they do they, it in the background. Yeah, they kind of um say please don't have, but you know, do they actually go ahead? Not too sure. I mean, do they, uh, do they have the systems to to immediate? I mean, you you can watch the person doing their thing. Does it like I'd be interested to know? Um, do their systems automatically just check for fines? I do know that there are people who use hide cars for crime, so. Um, no, but we're talking about fines yet, not crime. I mean, fines are crimes. <laughs> to a bank criminal. robbery in a rental. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> You've given them your driver's license, your credit card. <laughs> yeah, I'm robbing the bank. <laughs> <laughs> um, it does happen. Um, so, you know, maybe, I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm reading here. I'm reading what they what yeah. they told me. Um, they say that they'll they'll do a background check a little bit. So, do they? Probably not. I think it's Gee, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of work to do that. They do a background check on every renter. Well, I suppose it's in their T's and C so that they can do it if they need to. Yes, yes. I suppose. Okay, you okay. Know. That's a, we reached a good midpoint there. Yeah. So types of uh, occasions where you'd need to hire a car potentially. Have you ever hired a car for an occasion? No. Matric ball. No. 
Okay, me neither. Um, so I've never had to only work. That's the only time. But you know, we take dance, birthday parties, bachelors' weddings. Um, Technically, you do hire a car for funerals, but you don't. Yeah, drive it. I, I I don't think that would be your. Um, but you don't drive it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You would have to. And I, I mean, unless you th- unless you're saying to hire a car to get to the funeral. No, I think just in general you would, have, you would have to. Yeah, I heard you'd you'll probably have to hire. Yeah, I mean you could of unless course you have one it. lying around. Um, but I don't think many people do. So, <laughs> um, so you know, there's that. And then just something to you know, how do you know how much the average price is to hire a car in, in South Africa? Uh, I would imagine it's in the upper hundreds. Mm. Oh, well, mid mid hundreds. Yeah, three hundred seventeen rand on average per day, which is not too bad. Mm. Um, versus the three hundred thirty-three thousand, you know, it's much less um, of the Bugatti. Um, but limos, they, that's when it changes. That you know, you can. Go, Almost four thousand rand per hour. So if you're going to be hiring a car for an occasion, just know that if it's a limo for an occasion, it's going to be really expensive. Yeah, limos, uh, limos, I think are expensive because they're niche and there's not many of them around in South Africa. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, um, I wonder what it costs to hire a bus, like a like I'm a not, party bus. No, like like a, I'm not talking like about. A, a, I'm not talking about like a mini bus, like a taxi. I'm talking about like a proper big. Yeah, bus. Yeah, 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 like a school bus. Like a okay, school bus is midway. Yes, you're right. Maybe a school bus. But like oh, how a big bus are you? Like a, like, a, like a like a car train bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've been on that. That's a, that's a school. That was my school. My school bus was like a car train bus. Yes, that was mine. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking of the American school buses. You know, no, no, the no, yellow no. Ones. I mean, yeah. like uh, like a Putco bus or you know. Putco, you know I mean? Yes, so like a Putco yes, bus. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Putco bus. Is Putco still going? Um, I think they are. But you know, with regards to funerals, you know, people hire buses as well. In, in you know, in Durban, for instance, we always whenever I have to go to a funeral for for family there. Mm. We have to get a bus uh, for carry carry the whole family. Um, how so many how many people can fit on a bus? Not more than fifty four, I would imagine. The value uh, 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 hiring a bus. Mm-hmm. What's the going rate to hire a bus? Nineteen thousand rand. What's a day? And you get two hundred kilometers free. <laughs> a day. It oh looks like it. Wow. I don't know. That's uh, nineteen. Must be a day, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Coach, minibus, bus hire. Uh, yeah, it took 10,000 Rand, 9,000 Rand. No, that's a minibus, 9,000 Rand. So, bus must be, must be this 20 grand. Wow. Okay, that's, yeah, that's a lot more expensive than I thought it would be. To but hire a bus. Yeah. Well, no, if you can put 54 50 people? people in it and like what's 50 divided, here's my maths again. <laughs> Let's do it again. Do it again. 50, yeah. 50 divided into 20 grand. Um, you That's know. if fifty people are paying, but usually if you're hiring a bus, it's you're not not fifty people are paying unless it's like a what scenario would fifty people individually? Well, if you've got in? something like if you want to go to let's say uh, like a festival, or like something. the FNB Stadium, and there's you know like the World Cup soccer, or okay, you gather know. your fifty friends. <laughs> it's it's, good. it's, it's just a, an insane amount of people for one bus. I think usually in that scenario, it's one person who's. <laughs> Who's taking the pain? Oh, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's assuming you have fifty friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, I'd have a tough time. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you really pay relatively more. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Um, but yeah, so that's if you want to hire a car. Um, that's you know, those are options you have. But I don't know how I feel about hiring cars. It's always better to just. You know, well, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, when the Uber thing struck. Mm. And uh, and it was all the fad, all the the rage, should I say? Um, I was like, yeah, cool. You know, Uber's the is the business. Um, and then I started to experience the downsides. Yeah. So you know, the cars and the cars initially were all in good good nick and good condition. Yeah. Um, and then they started to deteriorate. Mm. And the first time I had a bad experience was in Cape Town. We're on a work trip. On a work trip, yeah. yeah. Uh, went down to Cape Town, got an Uber from the airport. Yeah. And for some reason, the Durban and Cape Town Ubers, Uber cars, yeah. are those venture type. Okay, yeah. Like, like a minivan. Like a little yeah. minivan yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. First of those things are like tin cans. Mm. But second of all, not in a good state in Cape Town. And I got into this thing and I was like, do I actually, do, you know, do I actually take this ride or not? We got into it anyway. Um, it was in terrible condition inside. Yeah. The seats were buggered. Mm. Um, and the guy drove from Cape Town International Airport into the city where our office was. Yeah. 
he almost, I, I think he almost knocked over two or three passengers. Uh, it's not passengers, two or three pedestrians. Yeah. Because he was on his phone all the time. Mm. And I, uh, eventually I said to him, you know, can you concentrate on driving? Mm, mm, mm. Um, and, and I had a really bad experience on that uh, trip and then it didn't get much better. Um, you know, every time I went to Durban or Cape Town, Gauteng, Uber, well, I haven't used one in a while. Yeah. Um, but seemed they're, they're to be in fine. decent condition. They're in yeah. decent condition. Yeah. But Cape Town and Durban, my goodness, those cars were in bad condition. I don't yeah. know what, whether it's changed or not. Um, yeah, I mean, whenever I'm in Cape Town, I actually, the first time I hired a car was actually in Cape Town. And I f- what I found was it's so cheap. It's so much cheaper to take an Uber and, and travel. No, yeah, of course, way. especially if you've got multiple people. Yeah, in Cape Town specifically. Yeah. Versus, yeah, um, that or whenever I go to Durban, even then, it's I think it's better to hire a car. But there, it's just so much cheaper to just... Mm. Um, Uber. To Uber, yeah. So it's I because everything is so close together. Yeah, yeah, it's probably that. Um, so that's one scenario where I would, you know, I would um, potentially Uber. But, you know, when it comes to hiring a car, I think it's, I don't think I'd ever do that option long term for like a month. There's some people that don't have a, they don't own a car, right? The, but I'm I've, trying to say, I'd actually, I'd rather, but I'd rather do a subscription service then. Or I would consider buying. A so car. there are quite a few in the market right now where you can, uh, you can subscribe to, to not owning cars well you you do you drive the car mm. um all the time so you mm. you sole driver of the car but you don't own it yeah um, and you just rent it um, you yeah. know so you get the rent to own models and yes. and the and the fancy bank finance that is an operating lease and but th- those are those are effectively just fancy ways of owning the car yes. right whereas the true rentals haven't really got scale yet in Europe and America, they have to a certain degree, like long-term rentals, or no, well, yeah, medium to long-term okay. rentals. So you can you can switch the car within six months. Okay, okay, okay. You know the rental companies now that are in the market, um, the pure rental companies. I'm not talking about the rent to own companies, like an Avis or a budget. Or no, no, that's guys. that's short-term rental. That's short-term I'm rental. About, that's so you want. get rent to own where you don't have good credit. Okay, I understand. Um, and you want to own a car, and you go and you sign this lease with a rent to own company yeah the car uh, effectively doesn't the title doesn't become yours until such as time as you've actually paid for it and you're renting the car but you're paying down the debt yeah exactly. so they, they're almost like a bank yeah but the pure rental companies where that doesn't happen there's no ownership option um, uh, those haven't proliferated in South Africa yet but uh, they're gaining a bit of momentum where you can actually you know rent a car yeah for a long time Long, medium to long term period. So like a six month period. Like six months, one year. You can change it if you want. Yeah. Um, whenever you want. And there's no there's hardly any risk. Yeah. Insurance is built in, Everything maintenance is built in, services are built in. And everything. you don't have to do you know, have the capital investment essentially or the initial investment yeah. of having to cough up a lot. Or or worry about taking the <clears throat> the you know, the the risk of depreciation and selling it. Exactly so, that. But uh, but it hasn't gained momentum yet yet. Yeah. Sadly not. But if you want to get a car or own a car, definitely buy a car. Um, and, you know, always search Auto Trader on Google if you're looking for a car to buy or sell is what we're always going to recommend. It's 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 nice to have that asset and it's it's yours. Um, so, yes. Now, before we end, George, I actually have a hot take. And <laughs> I think I've asked you this before. Must have been two years ago. Um, it must have been two years ago when... I think it was Prince Williams or Prince Charles had a, had a car accident. Um, he rolled over his car and he injured two people. He was perfectly fine. Um, and Maybe because he never drives? No, he, he's actually one of the, the few royals who, who, who always says he wants to drive his own car. But it, it put into question, should there be a minimum and maximum age for driving? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think that age is a factor. What about this guy? I mean, do you think he's he's old enough to drive? <laughs> oh, he looks he looks like he's in his teens. <laughs> I don't think he's yeah yeah he's probably okay. probably a child. Yeah, so so I mean, in 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 all reality, I think there should be a minimum, right? Yes. Okay. So first of all, there is a there there has to be an a, a start where you're no longer a child yeah. and you are more a bit more responsible. Yes. And yes. you understand the impact of this, you know. A uh, two-ton piece of metal traveling at 100 k's an hour. Yes. So you, you, there has to be a minimum age, I would say. 
So to answer your question more seriously, um, and that's in South Africa's eighteen, eighteen, seventeen with a with a with a learner's license, eighteen with a driver's license. Yes, yeah. I think I think eighteen is a good is a good place to start. I think sixteen is far too young. In in the US, some states are sixteen. Yeah, with a driver's license. Yes, yes. Um, I think that's a bit strange, specifically because there are implications if you're in an accident. Hey, we've got a higher accident rate than them, eh? For sure, for sure. Um, but should you be in an accident as a sixteen year old, usually you're not going to be trialed as an adult. Right, but I think a car is something depends on the country's age of majority. Sure. So whatever the legal system says, okay, when you're an adult, yes, could be different from country to country. And I think it should match in terms of driving age versus, um, you know, the legal age to be trialed, which is 18 in this country. Yes, and uh, you know, just because of the legal implications, it's um, juvenile jail. Yeah, but it's I, I don't think. I don't think you can wrap your head around the like when you're driving a car. It's not just about Mobility, you know, what I mean, I think there's a responsibility that you have as well. Too. Yeah, that's why I say there should yeah. be a minimum, definitely a minimum age. I think we got it right. I yeah, think 17 and 18 is good. Yeah, um, should there be a maximum age? I don't think so. I fully agree. I don't think so. And and and, and let me tell you the reasons I don't think so is because <laughs> um, more and more you read about uh, disease and death. Yes. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> Who is that, Prince? Uh, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> Prince Charles? I think no, it's Prince no, Charles. No, that's not Charles, isn't it, Albert? Is oh, it? Albert, yeah, yeah, must be. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so, the, the, so death, yes. aging and death, yes. right, uh, is, a, um, is more and more being spoken about as uh, a solvable disease. Okay. Okay? So, so people are living longer, they're getting older, mm. and they're getting older more healthy. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so so you can't really like one ninety-seven-year-old versus a uh, that was Prince Philip, by the way. Mm. Um, one ninety-seven-year-old versus another ninety-seven-year-old. Yeah, they're going to be two different. Two different. Things. Okay. Exactly so how that. you've treated your body over your lifetime yes. is going to be what you age like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, genetics plays a part, yes, but uh, nature nurtures. How you nurture your body is yeah. going to play half the role in, in what you like at 18, 90 years old. Yeah. So, therefore, nobody can come and say, oh, you can't, 95 and older, you can't drive. Yeah. Look, the numbers, there's been research done on this, and to your point, it's exactly that. Um, it's got nothing to do with ability the older you get. In fact, it's been proven that people who are older are less likely to be in accidents just well, because they drive a lot more carefully. Um, yeah, they, but they're, they're more likely slower. to get injured in, in an accident just because they are now older. But but again, disease is a solvable problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get around. No, sure. I say death is a solvable problem and, and, and disease results from age. Mm. Disease doesn't result from many other things. It's, mm. It often, most of the time, it results as a, it's as a result of age. Um, so therefore, as medical science progresses... Yeah. Right. People are going to be healthier, older. Yes. I mean, you look at today's eighty-year-olds. They don't look eighty. Yeah. My mother is in her seventies. Yeah. She doesn't look seventy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with you. I think, um, however, with that being said, I don't think age should be the parameter, but rather ability. So should we be testing every ten years to see if you still? Okay. So then that see, comes that that that, that um, brings like that that element in is. Mm regular tests yeah so i'll give you i'll give you an example of the of the uh, the industry that does that because you know i'm a recreational pilot yeah so so every two years you have to be tested test. again okay right yeah with a test pilot next to you mm. not a test pilot a uh, an instructor next yeah. to you and he puts you through your paces Mm. You're flying the airplane. He tells you how to fly, and uh, um, and you have to perform the exercises that he tells you to perform. And then also on the ground, uh, put you through some the theoretical tests. Mm. Um, Should we do the same thing with vehicles? <coughs> Personally, I think it, you know it's the I've, difference. I, so 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 here's the, I think here's the conundrum though: is the more sophisticated vehicles get, yeah, the less, the less reliant days. they are on the on human. The human, yeah. So, so is, is is there any point, really? Ooh. It's a hot take. So let's see, let's see. Maybe in the comments, people can give us their their perception on and and what they believe. So we're going to self driving vehicles. Do we create this massive system where you get retested every five years? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Anyways, that's pretty much all the time we have for today's episode. I'll see you next week, George. Go over Stappen. <laughs> well, yeah, in a month. <laughs> I'm gonna wait. <laughs>